This week, an act of heroism changes the course of an Oregon shooting. Russia launches a series of attacks inside Syria, and India commits to an environmental sustainability. I'm Maverick Ryan. And I'm Nikita Godbole. ATV News starts now. Over the past 24 hours, Russia has launched 18 attacks inside Syria. There have been doubts that the attacks are focused on just the Islamic State terrorist group ISIS. The attacks were directed at 12 facilities and caused multiple civilian casualties. Some are saying it is a way for Russia to kill the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad. Amidst the wake of Speaker Boehner's surprise resignation, Arne Duncan, President Obama's original Secretary of Education, has announced he will be stepping down in December. Duncan has stated no reason for his resignation, but he praised the work of his department and announced that he is confident that the department will be left in good hands. President Obama is expected to name John B. King Jr. as Secretary Duncan's successor. Now, for what's new in entertainment, we go to Emma Claire Martin. I'm Emma Claire Martin with your entertainment news. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office announced on Wednesday that Caitlyn Jenner would not be charged with any crime for her involvement in a fatal car accident earlier this year. Jenner was behind the wheel of a Cadillac Escalade in February when her vehicle struck a sedan, sending it into traffic, where it was struck by a Hummer. The driver of the sedan died at the scene. The DA's office determined that Jenner was not negligent in the accident. In theaters this week, we have He Named Me Malala release. The documentary follows the events leading up to the Taliban's attack on the acclaimed human rights activist. Also in theaters this month is The Martian, a science fiction feature starring Matt Damon, and Goosebumps, based on the classic 62 book series our generation grew up with. And finally this week, on Friday, actress Julie Andrews celebrated her 80th birthday. Andrews is best known for her legendary roles in The Sound of Music and Disney's Mary Poppins. The birthday celebration comes months after the entertainment community celebrated the 50th anniversary of the 1965 film The Sound of Music. With your entertainment news this week, I'm Emma Claire Martin. Thanks, Emma Claire. On Monday, the New Zealand Prime Minister announced that they would be building a fully protected ocean sanctuary, twice the size of the nation itself. The sanctuary will be home to many endangered sea turtle species, as well as seabirds, whales, and dolphins. New Zealanders are also hoping the big project can help grow the economy, and although it may cut back on their fishing and mining industry, they believe that they have found the right balance. In regards to the tragedy in Oregon this weekend, rather than focus on the details of the shooter, we here at ATV would like to commemorate the hero, Chris Mintz, as well as offer our condolences to the family of those we've, families of those we've lost. An Army veteran, Mintz had completed his tour of duty without sustaining any injuries. Mintz, although, sustained five gunshot wounds and broke both of his legs in confronting the shooter. He is in stable condition and is expected to recover, but will have to learn how to walk again. Colombian drug lord Victor Ramon Navarro Serrano was killed this Friday. He ran a criminal enterprise ca called the Liberado Moro Toro that grew coca, ran cocaine production labs, and sold metric tons of cocaine to the U.S., Canada, the Dominican Republic, and Europe. The U.S. government has offered a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to Navarro Serrano's arrest and conviction. Now we turn to Liza Villanueva for the latest in sports. Hello Eagles, this is Liza Villanueva with your sports report. This week in AU Athletics, the American University Volleyball team upset Army West Point in straight sets last night in Bender Arena. With set scores of 25-15, 25-20, and 25-14, the ladies celebrated their 18th consecutive home win against a Patriot League team. AU Volleyball now stands 11-5 overall and 4-0 in the Patriot League. Also on Friday, in cross country, the 42nd annual Paul Short Run ended with AU in 14th place of the team standings, led by Brendan Johnson, who ran 35th overall, and Joshua Ellis, who ran 37th overall in the men's race. In addition, Cassidy Ayer placed 36th overall in the women's race, with Americans standing as 28th among the teams. Catch AU Cross Country compete on October 17th at the Leopard Invitational, hosted by Lafayette, leading up to the Patriot League Championships on October 31st at Colgate. And in swim, the Pot Potomac Relay Invitational, held at the Reeves Aquatic Center, finished with AU being third in the women's team standings with 84 points. The men ended up with 60 points. Freshman Christopher Raykert and Sam Franken came in second place with junior Killian Korth 
in the 3 by 100 backstroke relay. Join AU Swim as they take on Loyola Maryland and Catholic University next weekend. This has been your ATV News Sports Report with Liza Vainueva. Back to you. Thanks, Liza. In another, in another display of antics, this week Donald Trump announced that if he were to be elected president, he would send however many Syrian refugees that come to the U.S. back to Syria. Again, setting the bar for the GOP. Many other presidential hopefuls chimed in, aiming to follow the frontrunner's lead, including Ben Carson, who likened Syrian ref refugees to the Sarnev brothers that committed the Boston bombings. Let's hand it over to Jill Cameron with our finance report. Thanks, Maverick. I'm Jill Cameron with your weekly financial report. The market was down a total of 22 points this week, but the Dow Industrial Average made a rebound on Friday, up 200 points. The Nasdaq was up 20 points this week, and the S&P was up 20 points as well. Making headlines this week was Dunkin' Donuts. The donut chain announced that they would be shutting down 100 stores within the next 15 months. Shares of Dunkin' Brands Incorporated fell 12% to $43.13 late Thursday after the announcement was made. In other news, the number of new jobs created for the month of September decreased sharply for the second month in a row. The economy added a total of 142 jobs, however, the unemployment rate remained unchanged at 5.1%, though more people dropped out of the labor force. The percentage of Americans in labor force fell to the lowest level since October of 1977. Within the past year, hourly wages rose 2.2%, however, the amount of time people worked each week fell to 34.5 hours for the month of September. This has been Jill Cameron with your weekly financial update. Thanks, Jill. I can't believe they're shutting down so many Dunkin' Donut franchises. What's America supposed to run on now? The world may never know. <laughs> Next up, we have Chris Schneider bringing us the latest in politics. Thanks, Maverick. I'm Chris Schneider with Politics. Last week, the House passed a Senate bill which avoided a government shutdown. The bill provides for the full funding of the federal government through December 11th, when the issue will come up again in Congress. Congress had been in gridlock over the issue of defunding Planned Parenthood, a goal of congressional Republicans following graphic videos alleging the wrongdoing by the organization. President Obama then signed the funding bill into law. In other news, there is more trouble for the embattled Secret Service, which is already under a microscope following the resignation of the agency's director earlier this year. The Department of Homeland Security issued a report which found that the director of the Secret Service knew that his agency violated the Privacy Act and accessed Representative Jason Chavitz's records. Chavitz, a Utah Republican, chairs the committee that is investigating the agency's numerous scandals and shortcomings. And finally this week, Representative Kevin McCarthy, Republican from California and favorite pick to be the next Speaker of the House, commented on Sean Hannity's Fox News program that the Republican majority in Congress had accomplished a great deal. When pressed by Hannity, McCarthy stated, quote, Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. Why? Because she's untrustable. But nobody would have known any of that had happened had we not fought." End quote. McCarthy has since backtracked the comments and drawn criticism from his Republican colleagues. This is Chris Schneider with your ATV News Politics Report. Thanks, Chris. Next up, we have Michaela Amos with World News. This is Michaela Amos with World News. This week, a 15-year-old in Britain was given a life sentence for his involvement in planning a terrorist attack that would have occurred during an annual Australian Day of Remembrance. Although he cannot be named under British law, he is thought to be the youngest person convicted of terrorism in the United Kingdom. A ship has gone missing in the Bahamas, likely as a result of Hurricane Joaquin. There are 33 people aboard, of which 28 are Americans. The U.S. Coast Guard is still searching for the ship. At least seven people have been killed by a series of parcel bomb blasts in China's Guangxi province. At least 51 others are injured and a suspect is in custody. This has been Michaela Amos with World News. Back to you, Nikita. Thank you, Michaela. India has just recently pledged to the UN to reduce the rate of its greenhouse gas emissions. India is currently the world's third largest carbon emitter. However, many are saying that if India wants to continue to grow its economy at the rate it is right now, they will not be able to reduce the emissions. We are confident we will achieve the 35% target by 2030. It is a huge jump for India, therefore it is a very ambitious target. Indian Environment Minister Prakash Zavvekar told a news conference in Delhi on Friday. The Vatican responded this week to allegations of intervening in the U.S. same-sex marriage debate after Pope Francis secretly met with Kim Davis. 
A Vatican spokesperson stated his meeting with her should not be considered a form of support for her position in all of its particular and complex aspects. It was revealed that the Pope also met with a very close friend who was an openly gay man. The audience was with his friend as well as his life partner. And now we go to Yukari Nakayama for this week's weather. Thanks, Maverick. I'm Yukari Nakayama bringing you the weekly weather report. We start the week off on Monday with a high of 64 and a low of 54, and leading us to Tuesday through Friday with weather in the 70s and in the low 50s. On Saturday, temperatures will rise to 76 degrees with a low of 59 and a 50% chance of rain. And on Sunday, the weather should clear up with a high of 71 and a low of 51 with a 20% chance of rain. This has been Yukari Nakayama with your ATV News Weather Report. It looks like we have a few days left of warm weather before fall kicks in. Now for the latest in campus news, we go to Talawani Omibi in What's Up AU. Thanks, Nikita. I'm Talawani Omibi, and this is What's Up AU. On Tuesday, American University Museum will be hosting the Blood Mirror Exhibition by Jordan Eagles, a response to the FDA's discriminatory policy against the donation of blood by gay and bisexual men. The open event is from 7 to 9 p.m. in the museum with free entrance. This Wednesday, the AU's Farmer's Market is back on the quad, selling produce from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And for those interested in national security, the National Security Agency will be having a workshop from 5 to 6.30 p.m. in the Mary Graydon Conference Room 3, RSVP through the AU Career website. On Thursday, the School of International Service will be hosting a lecture titled Why We Should Not Be Doing Climate Engineering Research. The lecture will be from 3.30 to 5 p.m. in the SIS Beacon Conference Room, also known as SIS 300. On Friday, students get an early end to the school week with full break. The university office will be open, but there will be no classes. On Saturday, th those interested in classical music will be glad to know that internationally acclaimed concert pianist Yulia Gorenman will be performing Russian masterpieces at the Abelson Family Recital Hall from 8 to 10 p.m. as part of a Gorenman Russian project. Tickets are $10 for AU students and $25 for general admission. RSVP is required. That's it for this edition of What's Up AU. I'm Tolawani Omibi. Thank you for watching. The month of October is set to be really busy. That's true. And you know, Ray Shmurda is actually coming on October 22nd. Not to mention Madeline Albright and Babe Buchanan. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for all that's coming up in October at AU. That's all for this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Maverick Ryan. And I'm Nikita Godboy. Thanks for watching ATV News.